Morilio Pirone from the University of Bologna in Italy is a postdoc fellow in labor discipline and new processes of organizing in the platform economy. Morillo Pirone participates in Into the Black Box, which is a collective and transdisciplinary research project that adopts logistics as a point of view on contemporary political, economic and social transformations. Now, when I was a student, uh, Pirone also worked as a food delivery worker for some famous online platforms, which I'm not going to name here. But what's interesting is that this experience has helped him shape his research interests in platform capitalism, in logistics, in social movements, in new forms of metropolitan unionism, and in the impact of digital technologies on the discipline and on the organization of labor. So, Morilio, I was wondering, what is Riders Union Bologna and how did you, because you are a researcher in the Department of, of Arts in, uh, at the University of Bologna, so how did you get involved in it? Riders Union Bologna is uh, a urban and uh, informal uh, union. Birth, uh, more or less three years ago, involved, engaged, in uh, the promotion of uh, labor rights for uh, food delivery riders. This union uh, uh, is a sort of um, experiment, I would say, uh, in uh, creating new forms of organization among workers beyond the traditional ones. When uh, Riders Union started to, to be active. I was a rider. I was mm -hmm. finishing my PhD. And uh, as uh, I cannot count on uh, fundings, I started to work as a rider. And uh, I met a lot of other riders uh, complaining uh, for working conditions. Uh, uh, and some of them uh, were friends or anyway social activists so we started to discuss among us what to do to improve um, riders working conditions so here it started and I think that was interesting to to highlight the informal features of this kind of union as uh, um, riders uh, are precarious workers without uh, clear uh, labor uh, and uh, uh, social rights. So also the form of their organization was more fluid, more informal mm -hmm. and more centered in uh, the self-activation self -activation of uh, workers. So nowadays I'm uh, uh, a, um, a postdoc researcher at the University of Bologna. So I survived in uh, another precarious sector until now. Uh, but I'm still um, going on uh, with my engagement with the Riders Union. Okay, you just said something that I found very interesting. Because, uh, as I think I told you, I, I live also in Italy, I live in Turin. And I remember at the beginning of the riders' phenomenon, how the riders look like you, you know, they look like young Italian um, guys. And I don't remember if it was two years ago and when we started noticing it, but suddenly I don't, I almost never see Italians or European looking um, people uh, as riders. I see a lot of people that we identify as, as migrants that are riding, the, riding their bikes or waiting in front of the restaurants. And so I was wondering, is it the same in other cities in, as far as you know, in Bologna and elsewhere? And how do you explain this shift in the profile of the workers? I can give you some feedbacks and hypotheses 
uh, on the basis of my experience of rider and my experience of unionist and my experience of researcher on uh, the platform economy. Um, the point is that uh, in uh, food delivery services and uh, more in general the platform economy is uh, qu a, a, a quite recent uh, uh, phenomenon. It emerged from the 2007-2008 crisis and in last years uh, it gained uh, a incredible growth. Think about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Think about the pressure on uh, digitalization of services, especially in urban areas. And think about also the transformations in uh, uh, customers' behaviors in terms of um, usability of the applications with the smartphones more than uh, uh, brick and mortar shops. When the platforms arrived, um, food delivery platforms, no more than four years ago in Italy, they started to root first of all, in big uh, cities, in the north of Italy, Turin, Milan, Bologna, and so on. And in the first phase of their expansion in the Italian context, we had fewer platforms, fewer services, so fewer hours. At the beginning, at the beginning, it was presented as uh, the, the typical uh, gig job. Mm. So, like leisure, like uh, a hobby, like a sport. I remember one of the managers of uh, one of the most important food delivery companies active here in Italy describing these uh, as the typical hobby for people interested uh, in biking. I remember that. It was a scandal. Yeah. <laughs> And they described this as a job that you could do between a, a class and another at your university. So maybe you are at the library, you are studying uh, and you receive uh, an order and you can uh, go doing the order and then back to studying. So at the beginning they tried to enroll a specific segment of uh, urban labor force typically young uh, students, but not only. Uh, I remember that there, was, uh, uh, there were differences among uh, the platforms. Some of the platforms uh, uh, tried also to recruit from the beginning uh, uh, a lot of migrants. Why? As uh, the typical strategy of a platform uh, in the first period uh, of uh, expansion in the city is to offer, first of all, uh, good fares to customers mm -hmm. and also some uh, um, benefits and uh, um, fixed fares to workers in order to be engaged with the platform. They, they had to attract workers. They were uh, novels in our cities. By the time the service expanded, customers began to be more practical with uh, uh, applications and smartphones uh, uh, services. And also uh, more restaurants um, had been uh, listed on uh, the platforms. So the service expanded and also other sectors of uh, urban labor force were attracted by the platforms. So we had uh, more migrants and uh, more uh, second or third level workers. What I mean? I mean workers of uh, 40, 50 years with families expulsed, expelled from uh, other segments of the labor market, people who lose their job, people uh, that uh, had to challenge with the problem uh, of unemployment, people in difficulties because of the pandemic. So they all moved on uh, 
platform uh, economy and especially on food delivery sector. So nowadays we may say that platforms are in food delivery sector are able to attract, to embed different segments of uh, urban uh, precarious working force. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, that's uh, yeah. That's that's really interesting because I I thought that one group had replaced the other and and no, you you explained that. Actually. Sometimes it depends also on the platform. I would say I cannot demonstrate totally this, but the general impression that many food delivery riders have is that some platforms prefer to have young Italians to make. The customers more confident. Some others prefer uh, to have a wide labor force available, so they recruit a lot of people in order to create a competition among them. Yeah. Also, something else um, I was very curious about is that, for example, I remember this being. Uh, Again, I'm talking about my own experience in Turin. I remember there was a strike of the riders a while ago. And then I checked on Twitter, you know, out of curiosity, if it was there was a hashtag, if there was a big movement. And it seemed like no one cared. And I'm wondering if there is a, there are oppositions between the interests of the consumers and the interests of the riders of, of you know, uh, the people who work for, for Deliveroo, for Uber Eats, even for Amazon. So I'm wondering, yeah, first of all, if there is a, a conflict of interest and if, um, on the other hand, uh, we are all humans and uh, we are citizens and customers. So, of course, I'm sure many people also wonder, is there anything we can do to help these workers and show some solidarity? And, you know, one idea would be, oh, we are going to boycott these apps. But then people say, oh, if you boycott the apps, these people don't have work anymore. Or then we can we can tip them, but maybe if we tip them, that's that's quite nice. But um, it's not necessarily make going to make their status uh, better. And it's, it's kind of uh, being a collaborator of Amazon and delivery delivery uh, and, and everything. So, um, what do you think about that? What what can we do? And uh... my impression is that. One of the main achievements of, uh, I don't know if you have to turn off the camera, it's... Uh, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, why not? One of the main achievements of the food delivery riders movement, not only at Italian level, but at global level, is uh, to have changed uh, the public opinion on this kind of labor. I told you, when we started to see these uh, services spreading out in our cities, people were quite... Uh, they didn't know too much, okay? And there was this narrative on uh, the gig job, the hobby, the informal activity. And on the other side, uh, the cheaper cost of the service were attractive for uh, customers. I think that, yeah, we saw a lot of strikes, of protests here in Italy. The movement has grown a lot. As uh, the last strike of the 26th of March demonstrated, it has been a nationwide strike uh, with more than uh, uh, 30 rallies in all Italy. It is quite overwhelming if we think about the difficulty to organize uh, such workers. And uh, together with the strikes, uh, it was launched um, a boycott of the platforms for one day. And I think that step by step, also people understood that this is not uh, a gig job, this is not an informal activity, this is a job. And it is also thanks to uh, rather struggles. I just remember when uh, Foodora, one of the main uh, food delivery platforms that now uh, abandoned the Italian market. Uh, they arrived in Bologna and uh, started this uh, social media campaign to to advertise on uh, this uh, new service in the city. 
and some people, many people, started to, to wrote under their Facebook posts, we will not order from you if you, you will not give uh, riders fair working conditions. And this is also as in Turin, there were a uh, um, trial uh, set up by um, food delivery riders against the platform for uh, uh, improving their working conditions. And I think that nowadays also the customers, but more in general, the public opinion changed the idea on the food delivery. It's no more possible, it's no more profitable also for the platforms to push only on cost savings. People started to ask for also a fair service. I saw this, for example, first time uh, in the collective agreement uh, uh, defined here in Bologna, it, it, um, the so-called uh, Charter for uh, Digital Workers' Rights is uh, a territorial agreement between uh, the municipality, some unions and some platforms, especially a local platform that now is no more, is not, mm, is no more so local, but it's becoming the first Italian food delivery platform that moved on uh, a fairer uh, organization of labor. So started to accept uh, industrial relations. Uh, we have to highlight that uh, until uh, last year, uh, all the food delivery platforms refused uh, to have industrial relations. But nowadays we can see how also Just Eat made a shift yeah. in uh, its uh, public uh, values as they signed uh, just a few days ago an agreement for uh, moving all the riders uh, to be employed and no more self-entrepreneurs. So I think that is uh, a big shift. And just to make another example, think about uh, today um, the book of um, Deliveroo on stock market. Mm. So it was quite a failure. Yeah, and correct. one of the reasons of uh, uh, investors' uh, skepticism is uh, the outrageous, is the, is the enormous uh, number of uh, products and trials Deliveroo is under uh, all around the globe. Huh. Um, something I get from listening to you is that uh, it's a bit reductive to have uh, this image of the rider uh, as being the poor victim. So I was wondering if, apart from unionism, have you noticed that uh, riders and, and other workers have developed uh, forms of resistance uh, to the algorithm, uh, ways to gain back some agency, to hack it? I remember reading somewhere that uh, sometimes the, the riders would at the same time disconnect from the platform so that would uh, between bracket three the algorithm and drive the, the price uh, for the delivery up and i think it's also possible that uh, uber drivers also i know they did it also in, in france so i'm wondering if you if you know more about that we may say that there is um, how to say how uh we could write uh, an handbook on uh, all tips and tricks. <laughs> but I think it would be conduct, uh, yeah, I, I think it would be great to have a book, you know, because I have the feeling like the French have developed theirs, the the, the British have theirs, and I I'm, I'm supposing the Spanish also and and the German. It would be so fantastic or to have a website or a forum for all. I don't know. But it's like yeah, a sure, sure. we cannot reveal all the. Ah, yeah, that's true. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, the uh, uh, otherwise, the magic will uh, will dissolve. But there are a lot of uh, counter conducts that you may have, and it's interesting to know how platforms changed their uh, uh, applications with all uh, uh, small changes but uh, continuously to adapt, to, to fit to riders' behaviors. You may find a lot of conducts. For example, 
uh, one of these was to um, when you have uh, a delivery at the end of the delivery you may close you have to close the delivery okay mm -hmm. a notification a formal notification and uh, you are paid uh, by by time so you can take a rest and uh, mm. you can close uh, the delivery with more time than uh, you know the the one that you will uh, really need or um, in other cases uh, just to mention and the kind of conduct uh, you can uh, refuse you can place yourself okay in a, a better area than in other according to the frequency of uh, good fares uh, uh, good fares the rivalries. What we have to say is that, uh, just mention another example on this, maybe you have seen uh, this famous picture of uh, in the United States of a tree with a lot of mobile phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Because uh, these uh, mobile phones were used as a bridge for the signal, but to catch the hoarders before uh, other riders, because uh, uh, they were closer to the potential uh, uh, center of transmission of the orders. And we have to say that, for example, another ambiguous uh, and problematic uh, phenomenon is the use of both of applications. To, they are pirate applications that, uh, like in uh, some uh, financial operations, they help to uh, shorten the time to get the uh, notifications of uh, free shifts to to book them. So we have a lot of these kind of uh, counter content and alternative use of technologies. But we have to say another uh, point. Many workers adopted to these precarious conditions to their goals. So what does it mean? Many workers, especially at the beginning, described uh, this uh, as a um, temporary job. So they were interested in uh, building up others in their life, like I did, and used this job uh, as uh, a sort of uh, welfare. Mm -hmm. So as they were not covered by enough uh, and uh, adequate social protections, they used this uh, temporary job to gain uh, an income and uh, in the meanwhile to work on other uh, light goals. Okay, I have um, one last question uh, and it's, it's the obvious one is the one related to the pandemic because during the pandemic these uh, riders on the one hand, they, yeah, we finally uh, saw how important they were for for many people, people who, who cannot go out because they are at risk or because they, they don't live in the city center, near a supermarket, near, near a pharmacy or near a restaurant. On the other hand, uh, they really put their lives at risk. They are the ones who had to touch everything and to meet so many people several, several times a day. So um, I'm wondering if this, uh, this terrible pandemic period where we are living is does it have at least, you know, a, a little bit of silver lining for, for them? Um, has their visibility improved their, their working conditions, maybe their status? Sure. At the beginning, we may say that uh, firms were more interested in uh, customer protection than workers' protections. They uh, spend a lot of time in... Um, communication with the customers to set up, uh, uh, they say, uh, a contactless service. Mm -hmm. So to rearrange the delivery in order to not have uh, a physical contact between uh, the worker and uh, the customer. Moreover, platforms invested in their social uh, or corporate responsibility, I would say, they invested a lot in um, campaigns of uh, social engagement. Think about, uh, uh, for example, uh, Deliveroo supporting uh, medicine uh, deliveries. 
Or think about uh, A, B, and B giving free hosting uh, to doctors and nurses. Uh, I didn't know that. Hmm. But at the same time, they denied completely at the beginning uh, personal protection equipments to workers. Here in Bologna, we had uh, a trial and the worker won the trial. And the trial was on the uh, obligations of the company to furnish masks and uh, sanitizer to workers. We won and after the Riveru started to furnish uh, all these uh, equipments to workers. Moreover, we had to organize, for example, here in Bologna, together with the municipality, to collect masks and other tools, and we distributed it to workers, as the company at the beginning refused because mm -hmm. of uh, the uh, self-entrepreneur condition. Furthermore, we have to say that the riders were excluded from uh, welfare protections in many cases. Say so they cannot, uh, uh, they cannot apply for a lot of benefits. They were excluded, and moreover, sometimes, yeah, also companies introduced uh, some uh, some benefits. But we have to say that, for example, riders had to demonstrate their condition of uh, uh, sickness. But you know that, for example, if you are suspected to have the coronavirus, you have to be in quarantine mm -hmm. for uh, the results of the test. And this time is not covered by any kind uh, of uh, protection. It's all up to you. Indeed, here in Bologna, we organized also, we are organizing, now we do every week, uh, free tests for food delivery, food delivery riders. They can do a free swap. But we also reported the concerns of many riders to be detected as uh, positive to coronavirus, to have to stay at home without access to good uh, welfare and uh, social protections. At the same time, you know, we saw the food delivery services growing up a lot in our urban uh, areas. In last uh, year, probably our uh, city became a sort of diffused dark kitchen, you know, as in London, where uh, Deliveroo and other companies started to furnish this service to restaurants. So these uh, boxes where uh, other workers uh, prepare meals uh, and uh, food delivery riders uh, uh, go uh, furnishing the service. And uh, our cities were uh, like uh, spectral, like uh, Empty spaces where only riders cross the streets like ghosts, moving from one dark kitchen to another. And it's mm -hmm. clear that they became a sort of essential ser uh, workers. They were the ones in the streets, as you said, entering also in touch with a lot of people in closed spaces, uh, working every time. So we have a gap between their. Uh, material role in our urban economies and their formal acknowledgement in terms of working conditions and social protections. And this gap uh, has been perceived also by customers and reinforced the idea that we have uh, to change uh, this situation.